Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum, where we have not one, not two, but three Schmiemobiles, plus maybe a fourth? Maybe That's a fourth. stretching, that's stretching. Anyway, we've got a few cars returning to the garage. Lots of cars have been out for all sorts of different things recently. But Brad, we've just come back, obviously, from picking up the Lusso. And it's looking so, so good. Honestly, the front end of this car looks brand new. So as I spoke about on the Shmiel 50 channel, when we went down to Topaz to see the Zenvo, this was in having the front end completely re-PPF'd. It's something you can do when a car's a little bit older. You know, this car had bug splatters that had pretty much stained the PPF, but also plenty of stone chips across the front. So effectively by removing the PPF, touching in some of the satin black areas, and then giving it a whole new PPF up front, you would think that this was a new car yesterday. Yeah. Do we have a photo of how it was before? I'm sure we do. If we do, it was... it's overlaid right now, but looking how this is now, it literally looks like a brand new car. It's ridiculous. It's amazing how PPF allows you to do that without having to respray like the whole of the front end because yep. to blend this in is a massive paint job. So that is one of the reasons why we have PPF on all the cars. So car number one that has returned is the Ferrari GTC Fall or so. Cars number two and number three, we're off to get the Ford GT and there's a bit of a story behind the Ford GT. You'll have seen the video on the Shmi on 50 channel where we had good news because we went to take it in and we got a new windscreen and we had bad news because there was a problem with the exhaust and now we have a gaping hole where it hasn't been recently, but we are gonna be heading back shortly to Multimatic with the Cupra to go and pick it up. So I guess you're probably gonna be driving the Cupra again. Yep. Team car That's doing right. its team duties. Then we've got the return of the Lotus Elise, Firefly. Firefly is gonna be back in this video, but tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, who knows exactly what. Firefly has a lot of miles. I can't wait to, we need to figure out what the last mileage we like had it and drove it on. I remember was. it was about 900. So we had it on 900, now we need to see what it's on when it arrives. And at 900, it wasn't yet run in. So True. we've only driven it to four and a half thousand RPM. Basically the owner took it off on a massive tour and then 111 cars took it off on a massive tour as well. Um, the owner invited them to drive the car. So it's coming back shortly and I can't wait. But I've also got a few other things. Yeah, so by the end of this video, we've got the, the Lusso's back, the GT's back, the Elise is back, and we've got some other stuff in yep. here. Now, some of you might know what this is. I've been talking about storage issues in the SF90. We'll come to that later. And there's something in there that I'm really quite excited about as well. Small hint. Small, small hint. Small hint. Small. As you point at shelves full of uh, that certain building blocks. Brick, yeah. Brand, yeah. Small hint, small hint about what's coming there. So we pretty much need to gear ourselves up because we're going to get the GT, then we're going to do some stuff with the SF90, all of this, and the Lotus. Let's go. Brad, mm -hmm. I heard you were playing charging roulette with the Mini. Do you know what's really funny? I was going to come in and say, should we take this? <laughs> but I don't think we'd actually make it there and back. So when you plugged it in here, how little range was left? Uh, I had about five miles of range, <laughs> which in an electric car is sketchy because in a petrol car you run out, you can normally put it into like neutral and you know push it onto a recovery truck or just fill it up with petrol. If this runs out, I mean... Who knows what you do? Yeah, with a petrol car, somebody just brings you a jerry can and you're on, yeah. your, on your way again. It's something I think we're all a little bit anxious about and the range of the Mini is certainly a topic we have touched on is not the best, but I've been using it mostly for commuting in and out of London and for that it does a great yeah. job. And the commuting I've used it for, exactly the same thing, perfect. But today we're going 150, well maybe even nearly 200 miles. Probably something like that, yeah. We're not doing the charging. No, we'll get right. there. <laughs> right, anyway, <laughs> we need to go. go because if we leave it too long, we're gonna be here. Well, we're gonna be back super late. Yes, um, we're getting towards the afternoon. We actually Fridays. need to just lock all of these up. We do. Um, getting towards the end of the day and uh, otherwise we'll have a problem. So. See you all shortly, let's go. Very quickly before we go, you might have spotted these in the background. We have some more models in the one to 64 scale collection. We started with the Senna, four and a half thousand pieces. Those went very fast. We have a few of the 2000 GT500s from Tarmac Works and Mini GT remaining, but the next three in the series are now here. We have the Tarmac Works Mini GT, Ford GT, and the Taycan Turbo S, and we have the Tarmac Works G63. Let me quickly open these to show you what we've got. There are 2,000 of each of the Ford GT and the Taycans. There are 1,000 of the G63s. These are available right now. Look at this. How cool is that? In my colors, the colors of the Shmimobile, the little Ford GT, and the Taycan as well. 
memories of the mileage that we did with this, even with the gold wheels and the gold pinstripes. It's quite securely held in the packaging, but even with the gold details around the lower section and the front splitter, super cool. And obviously the G63 as well. Fond memories of the G63. These are the third, fourth and fifth models in our series. There's one more to come, but those three are all available right now, along with a few more GT500s as well. So grab them while you still can. For now, we need to get on the road, on our way to go get the GT. It is Cooper time. All right, I, I'm gonna put my bag in the back for once. We need to clean this off as well, by the way. That's not good. We'll, um, do, we'll do that when we get back. <laughs> car washing when we get home. Maybe, maybe not. All right, okay. Into the Cupra we go. Team I just, car. I love this. Yeah? No, like, start button down here in the center console, like most things, or on your dash. Does it feel Sounds like you're driving or... a Chiron? Yeah, exactly. Bugatti Chiron startup. Boom, like that. Oh. Let's go. The kind of annoying thing is that we have quite a long journey today. Um, we've still got over an hour and a half to go, which is going to be stressful. That's not ideal, but traffic jams ahead. It is what it is, hey? Just have to be patient, rock and roll, we'll get there. Check this out, up ahead of us, I don't know if you can see that, there is an acrobatic stump plane of sorts, which is no doubt why we're in a bit of traffic. This is mental. Okay, um, there it is. I'm like, I was just about to say on the camera, I'm saying this and nobody can see it. Yeah. So, <laughs> you have I mean, to believe me. The sad thing for me is I need to focus on the traffic and not go in the back of this Volvo in front. But that plane was upside down doing a big loop the loop thing in front of us a moment ago. And like we're Where's somewhere near Duxford, which is the Imperial uh, Air Museum. Yeah, which means lots of like Spitfires and it looks quite old too. There it is. Whoa, the that was so low to the ground. Look at that. That is so cool. That's crazy. What is it? Is it a warplane of sorts? I mean, it it's obviously old. It looks very old school. Well, that's. What? Alive. It just did a loop the loop, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect this to happen on our drive, but it makes sense why there is traffic in this area. I'm all right with the traffic now, all of a sudden. I don't mind so much that it's still an hour to go 39 miles. Yeah, look at this, just traffic jam. Because everyone's just sidetracked by whatever's going on here. I was, where is it gonna pop out from behind the trees again? Should we pull in and go have a look at what's going on? Forget the Ford GT, we're going to watch some planes. We can go and get the Ford GT another day. Can't it we? is the Imperial War Museum, by the way, here at Dunstead. Tanks, planes, all sorts. Was that the plane that was flying, do you think? No, I don't think that was the plane that was flying. <laughs> if you saw my recent Shmi 150 video, we're very much seeing deja vu back past the Ford dealership before we arrive at Multimatic, um, which is just up here where the Ford GT is being looked after. I think we probably made a little bit of time, maybe. Don't Not too bad. Remember. I'm having massive deja vu because I literally did this exact same drive in this car. Yes. Well, let's hope my car is around and ready to be collected. And off we go, visitor parking. Magic, we're back with the Ford GT here at Multimatic, where I've actually come a couple of times recently to bring the car out, to get the windscreen installed, then to come back because they're actually able to source the glass and get it fitted super efficiently. Massive thanks for that. And then of course we discovered the little issue with the exhaust system. Now, a few people were just asking, is it maybe a heat shield that wasn't attached properly or something else like that? It's actually a lot more complicated with the exhaust system itself. So that exhaust has been taken off the car and what is actually now on the car is my US system that I had fitted when the car was over there. Now there is actually a little issue with this exhaust so it's not a long-term permanent solution but for the time being this one is actually better than the one we've just taken off which internally had some issues hence why we've swapped it back around. It wasn't just a case of a rattle from something being slightly unscrewed. A little bit more complicated than that or we would have just screwed it up and problem solved. I'm not sure what's gonna happen down the line, but what I can tell you for right now is that we can start it up with the US system on it. And I'd forgotten how loud it is in so comparison. Had so had I. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we it looks need, the same. It looks the same, but it doesn't sound the same. So you better jump in and we need to get some noise. Yeah, take a quick listen just to the startup. so much more how a supercar should sound. I've actually forgotten how this sounded. You have to speak loudly to speak over it, whereas exactly. in the stock system, only at the cold start a little bit. Yep. And then after the cold start, you just talk normally. It's gonna be a good drive home. I don't know what my long-term solution is going to be. 
it's clearly something fishy or the way I drive, I don't know. But either way, I like that. Just I know that this isn't a permanent fix. We're gonna have to swap it with something at some point. Yeah. Pros and cons of cars. What I can say though is the team here at Motomatic are super friendly and it's a big part actually of owning a car like this is the experience and after sales. And since day one, they've been amazing. They've been absolutely amazing. Um, should we get on the road? Let's do it. Right, let's go. So you're gonna keep the windows down for a moment. Time to hit the road. This is kind of cool because I know Tim's saying probably very similar. Um, so excuse if you're if you've heard me say this and then you hear Tim say exactly the same thing all the other way around. I don't know how this is going to work. It's amazing how much difference this makes. Remember, this is the factory sports exhaust option on the order form with A4 GT in the USA. This is the system that you get if you tick that box, which I had fitted at Galpin in Los Angeles, which is a huge Ford dealership. I think perhaps the number one Ford GT dealership as well. Oh, that's much more familiar. Instantly, just a little bit more to it. It's actually funny how that, I mean, just reminds me of what the car had in the past. It just burbles a little bit more, a bit more to it, which is what you want. It's a supercar. It's supposed to sound crazy. Instantly, that sounds so much better. <laughs> this is crazy. I forgot how much noise that makes, and we've said it way too much already just before leaving, but that is something special. And doesn't it just look insane? Like Ford GT. I'm jealous that I'm in this and not in that, but we can't all be winners, right? Sometimes we have to just, yeah. I have to sit from the outside, which is equally as good. No. Slight problem. I've lost him. <laughs> so let's go and cut over to Tim's angle and see what's going on with him because I'm currently stuck. 12 seconds later. It is genuinely funny how much difference this makes. It sounds like a proper supercar again. Exhausts have a huge impact on cars. And you know, this is a factory system, as I said. It's not like I've decatted it or put a straight pipe on or something like that. It just allows it to be more of what you would expect. Not that even with this, it's particularly loud. It's obviously louder, raspier, rawer, which is exactly what you would want out of a car like this, let's be real. So I think this is, you know, the winning solution, basically. If only it wasn't with its own slight issue that we need to rectify. Hmm. I've now got Brad in front of me, which makes a little bit more sense. When I say problems, by the way, this is to do with internals to the exhaust. This is to do with baffles and things inside. I don't really understand it at all, but if things aren't still fitted correctly, it's obviously a bit of a problem. So that's basically what's happening. Um, I don't know why, I don't understand if there's some technical or very complicated engineering explanation for it. All I know is that from a customer point of view, the guys here are being very helpful. Even though it's a bit frustrating. That sounds so much better. Very surely. As you crack the window a little bit, over my shoulder you will see the Ford GT come past. In three, two, one. Oh, I've missed that. That sounds so, so good. That is a good noise. We need more of that, Tim. We need more of that. Coming down to a roundabout, I can hear some downshifts. Let's pop this into Cooper mode. Brake lights flashing. Let's try and keep with him so we don't lose it for the acceleration. Here we go again. Time for some accelerations because it sounds insane. He's teasing me. <laughs> Let me hear it, Tim. Oh my. That. 
That is nuts. That is nuts. And we are back. Just like that. A nice stress-free a stress-free journey. And we're back in the barn. And do you know what? The Ford GT doesn't actually. Oh that's Oh that's good. Now, time to talk about what we've got here. And also, Schmark is here. <laughs> He's made it hey, back Mark. over. So, box number one. We'll come back for the others in just a moment. I was thinking about this just now. So, Sea Sucker, you might know. Um, I've just bought these suction roof bars, monkey bars as they call them, suctioned onto the roof of the car. My original idea, which I had talked about, Brad, wasn't it? Was have, I'm, the... I'm a little bit disappointed because I thought we were getting monkey bars to, you know, like oh, climb like... around underneath the mezzanine. But no. No. <laughs> so I was, I was about to say slightly more grown up, but it's really not slightly more grown up. My idea was, given the SF90 has no luggage space and it's four-wheel drive, when it comes to winter, I could take it on a ski trip to the mountains. And therefore, to solve the storage problems, I could get some roof bars and get a roof box. But given I've just been driving in the Ford GT, which also has no luggage space, and I wouldn't mind doing some more miles on it because I believe it's the second highest mileage Ford GT in Europe, and perhaps I should aim to make it the highest mileage Ford GT in Europe. Sounds like a challenge. Yeah, needs a couple of thousand more, but we could do that. Um, the idea is that what we've got in here, I have no idea if I'm gonna do this the right way or the wrong way, is a set of suction pads. Oh, nice. Yeah, to hold on. Well, I need to go and buy some roof, a roof box, but part one, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've just opened this for the first time. Well, they've got covers on them. You need to they do, the they do. Covers on, obviously. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not about to attach them properly and permanently because they actually, I would suspect, will leave marks on the PPF, probably. So I need to be committed that I'm going to replace the PPF at the time that I do this, when the time is right. But effectively, you can rotate them. Can you change the angle of these? I don't know. Maybe it has to sit on something flatter than this. Ooh, that could be a problem because that's not very flat. Interesting. Maybe we have to do it on the SF90. These will be at the front. Those will be at the back. Put on some roof bars. Go buy a roof box. Hey, presto, we have a solution. I have no idea if this is going to be a good idea or not. <laughs> I really have no idea. <laughs> that just comes off. But it will be fun either way. It's something a bit different. I live for doing things that are different. Yeah. Where else are you going to see a Ford GT with a roof box driving down? Well, I have road? seen a Ford GT with a roof box. Okay. At Brian's amazing garage in Kansas in the US. Well, Absolute I, legend. I haven't, so hopefully I can see one here. <laughs> <laughs> so just out of interest, SF90. Because the thing I was trying to work out with the SF90 is the roof line, because you have that shark fin, which is really stupid. Um, but. The reason you have the shark fin, by the way, is because it's got the antenna for the digital radio for DAB. I don't really listen to radio. I have Spotify on or something all the time. So in some regions, you don't have the shark fin, but you don't have digital radio. You can't uncheck digital radio. You have to have it here. So you have to have the shark fin. Can we tailor made it for our, can we remove that? You probably could please? remove it and just go over it and it's just gloss black and paint, like fill it. It's probably not a good idea though. But these, same story can go here and here, and I think the bars will be just high enough that the roof box will go over the shark fin. The only thing I'm worried about, and the reason I wanted to get these before getting the whole roof box solution, is to work out if the angle is gonna be so big, but it's not actually that the roof box would look stupid, but it, it doesn't. It's, I mean, it's definitely taller at the front, but it's not crazy taller. If I get these right towards the edge, hmm. and that one at the back, yeah, I think this can work. I'm not gonna install them right now. That's one to try out when I'm feeling brave. I'm not gonna install them right now. That's one to try out when I'm feeling brave. Things might have got out of hand. We now have an empty box. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, an empty box means we've tried to put it on the car. Ta-da! <laughs> it's all just resting in place. None of this is fixed at the moment. Like the bars just move around and stuff. Um, the close call was, can you still open the door? Because if you can't open the door, this would be game over, right? Luckily. That's so funny. <laughs> Luckily you can. Yeah, we're good. And we're good on both sides. We checked that. So technically now you could do all of this, tighten it all down when the orange yeah. bits have disappeared. Tighten the bars in place. Tighten all of this up and 
go put a roof box on top. Hmm. Technically. No, not te technically. I mean, you can. Literally the one could. thing that might not work is the roof box would hang out over the back. So if you needed to access here, that would only open to like that far. Which is completely fine. It's about as far as it goes anyway. I was going to say, but as far as anything you would put in here, you wouldn't bother. You should just put it in the roof box. Yeah, true. So no concerns. Done. Fascinating. Hmm. The next question, though, is given how these have to be positioned, I'm just going to pop them off. I say that. There we go. They've kind of stuck down already. Um, if I pop those off. Oh, no. I was going to try something which I think is a really stupid idea. I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. Remember, nothing's tightened it like together. Yes, that's what I was going to say. So if I pivot, if you pivot, this is going to come <laughs> down here and probably scratch the whole side of the car. Yes, it's PPF, but let's not risk that. Would you like me to take? <laughs> you got I got it? it. I got it. There you go. We're good. Okay. We'll be we going to the SF90 one. We're going to have a little go. See what happens. I'm the wrong way around. I need to come this way around. The problem is that has too much curvature. Yeah. So I you don't have to think... go back a bit further, but then you're well, the rake does... of it. I don't know. I think if you just press them down, I'm just going to do like... Uh, you got no suction on your outer on one. On the back one. Does this work? I mean, that works. I mean, yeah. Why not? I... Roof box on a Ferrari SF90. <laughs> I mean, we've got to get the roof box first, but... It's good that we didn't get a spider. <laughs> Could you imagine? You put a roof bar on and then you open the roof. The roof, box, the roof box just goes flying. And you break a very expensive roof mechanism True. on a Ferrari. Yeah. That I mean, that kind of cool, works. Actually. These all move around so you can adjust it and set it up exactly right. Nice. And, and it will probably, I think it should clear over the top of the um, Be the tight, but fit. yeah, once you add a roof box, it has a little bit more height on it, so maybe. Now we're going all the way, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, this is probably a really bad idea, Where are you right? Going? Would you... Um, yeah, be careful. <laughs> Let me take that side. Ooh, it actually... Yeah, completely clears. Yeah, well, We're good. Clear. And the back bar actually fits on quite easily. I mean, I'm just going to leave it there. That'll do. Only concern here is that the front one is a little bit higher than the rear. Yeah, not by too much, but is it going to be yeah. too much rake? Maybe there's like some bracket or an adapter you can get for the roof yeah. box that just sits it a little bit higher. Either way. I'm fairly impressed with the simplicity of that. It looks quite cool. <laughs> yeah, not bad. For the moment, this box is being left alone because it's a recipe for trouble. <laughs> so let's move on to the next boxes. Now this is quite fun. The big hint. Yeah. Subtle. Lego. Yeah. This is the Daytona SP3 signed by Uber Vada the designer, senior designer at Lego, responsible for this. Um, so cool. Yes. And I'm going to try to slide it out. Let me hold that bit and then... Yeah, thank you. So leave that to the side. This is not yet opened, but it's epic to have that signed. I like need... the Chiron box over at the back as well. I need one of these. Yeah, and then also they released this, which is the special limited edition wow. book that goes with the project. Wow. It's a lovely thing to have as well. So yes, that was an absolute must, unsurprisingly, given I went to Billund, home of Lego in Denmark, and saw this and had, to, had a look through the archives. But I'm definitely going to build it. We're not going to leave it in the box. It's got to be built. In the book very quickly. How cool is that? That's really, really cool. To be treasured, to be absolutely treasured. This makes me want to spend money, Tim. <laughs> I, want a, I want an SP3 Daytona Lego. Lego is dangerous. Lego is super dangerous. Oh, new Ferrari for the collection. We, we do. Do we clickbait that? <laughs> Have we done that too <laughs> much recently? We've done enough with uh, some NOS in the STO. Okay, no new Ferrari for the collection. Just a lovely thing to have let's just box it all up for now make sure it stays safe and perfect tomorrow fast forward to the next morning back here at the Schmuseum with an unfamiliar car a satin black 488 spider which has been driven here today by my friend Stephen Sully welcome thank you for having me I just thought well where we're going to do this podcast for the Stephen Sully study interviewing the iconic <laughs> Shmi 150 I had to turn up in a in a supercar and uh 
what a car it is. You did that. So we met on the Gumball 3000. You were driving in an Aventador. Yep, Roaster. Um, branding, talk a little bit about it. People will remember the car, I'm sure, from the videos. So I'm the founder of a brand, a private gallery. In actual fact, we're moving to uh, Banks' former gallery in Sackville Street in Mayfair called Woodbury House. Uh, the guy that we represent is known as the godfather of street art, not my words, that's the words by the New York Times. And basically he used to um, paint on stop signs as well as other things as well. In the 70s and 80s he uh, started this movement called street art and today it's known as con contemporary, the, the contemporary street art movement. So yeah, the whole car was, had Woodbury House logos as well as the iconic stop signs by Richard Hamilton. And we drove together on quite a few of the days, us, DDE, Max, and Mr. JWW. We had a bit of a crew going on, all of you guys with your Aventadors, deafening me and my Mustang. <laughs> it's quite fun, wasn't it? That was your first gumball. First gumball, first of many. Um, I've actually got sort of, uh, I'm a little bit sort of um and ah whether I want to do the, the Middle Eastern one, uh -huh. which is coming up at the end of the year. But definitely next year, I've already been speaking to the kind of crew that we had together um, about doing it next year. I just think cars, different places around the world, but the most important thing, connecting with people like yourself. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's such a cool community on Gumball. So you've come down today in a 488 Spider, mm -hmm. which is very different to any of my cars, sat in black. You've borrowed it for the weekend? Yeah, do you know, I, I don't actually drive a car myself. I, I've had plenty of cars like Bentleys, Porsche Turbos. Uh, Lambos, you've had a few Lambos. Yeah, a few Lambos. My favorite one was the Performante Gallardo, which was an absolute beast of yeah. a car. I really adored that car. I've had a 458, etc. But you know what, working in Soho, I just don't need a car. But, <laughs> but since the Gumball Rally and since interviewing Damon Fryer from D DDE, Mr. JWW, yourself, Lord Aleem, loads of different car kind of YouTubers, I really feel inspired <laughs> now to, to get a car. Getting the bug back. It catches you, and believe me, it catches you hard. <laughs> it, I, I heard, I heard that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we've been recording a podcast for your podcast, the Stephen Sully, see, Stephen Sully Study. That's it. <laughs> Got to get that right. So guys, I'll pop a link down to that as well if you want to check out uh, Stephen's pages and everything. So thanks for coming down. Yeah, thank you very much. And you was an absolute gentleman of a Pleasure. guest. Good to Cheers. see you. Thank you. It's time for a swap around. The Ferrari is going to leave and the Lotus is about to arrive. The Lotus Elise is back at long last. Just pop away these for the moment so we can get everything opened up. Our bollards. <laughs> From Bollard Security, um, and then get the shutter open. The guys are just loading up at the moment. I'm quite looking forward to seeing the bright orange one again. Now, the interesting thing for us is that, remember as I spoke about many times in the videos, the orange paint of the Lotus, over time, was always going to fade. It was always going to acquire a patina, effectively, because it's so bright, it fades with sunlight. We've known that since day one, and today, we're actually gonna see some samples of what the paint was originally like with the paint samples, and what it's like now that the car has over 10,000 miles and has been out in the sunshine of Italy, Spain, and all around Europe for the last month or two. So you name it, it's probably been there. <laughs> it's gonna look quite different, quite different. And I'm super intrigued about this. It's gonna be fascinating to be able to make that comparison. So in a couple of minutes, Ferrari out, Lotus in, let's have a look. It is a very bright day. Farewell, gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Great to see you. I'll see you again soon. You too. See you later, guys. Cool. See you later. Here we go. I'm starting outside because this colour in the sun is what it's all about. But Firefly is back in this museum and I mean, instantly that still looks ridiculously bright. It is very cool. Now, as I, there's no good way to get out of here. No, I should like, for your <laughs> decency, I should turn the camera away, but I'm not going to. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> oh, that's bright. Yeah. And I tell you what's funny, it's the, part, the smallest car next to the biggest car. That's true. God, that needs a clean. That needs a Tom. clean. <laughs> Tom's going to be called into duty. Yeah. That's so bright. I tell you what, after the 488's left that space, and we've now parked that in that space, it's just minuscule because the 488 basically went back to the gazebo and stuck out over the line. Yeah, isn't it mad how instantly colours of the other cars have, like the Roadster GTR already looks brown again. The, Focus has the, started um, to look Focus, faded. Yeah. It's crazy. And that is what we need to talk about. So let me go and quickly grab the samples and this will all make sense. Hang tight here for just one moment because 
there are a few things. We'll just keep looking at the car and the dirt. So, here are the tests. Right, bear with me. Different things that have been used for different purposes. Original paint sample. Are you ready for this? Come I'm and look at this. the Whoa, Come and look at the color. Let the camera adjust. That's what it did look like. <laughs> mad, mad, right? That is mad. And that is an interesting one where there was a strip stuck over here and the other sides were left for about four weeks outside. Yeah, you can see it there with one of the lights. So original color, one month outside, driving around Europe. It's fascinating how much the color has deteriorated. But that is half the fun and that's what the owner kind of wanted from it to show that it's driven because we should look at the mileage as well. In fact, I'm just going to leave those yeah, there. Yeah, let's do that. The mileage on here, this is the most incredible thing. Come have a look quickly. I'm going to have to fall in. Wait. <laughs> you ready for this? Steering lock. Wait for it, wait for it. Down here, I think. Waiting. 10,370 miles. Miles, not kilometers. Miles. 10,370. Wow. This car was collected like three or four months ago. Three or four months? Not three or four years. <laughs> like, I mean, good effort. Yeah, fair, fair play. play. Literally fair play. <laughs> That's like, I, I don't even have a benchmark for it. It's, when did we collect this? Was it early May? So less than three months ago, less than three months ago, and it's 10,370 miles. I mean, that's been enjoyed. That's been driven and enjoyed. And I've not driven it since it was run in, since it's had the running in oil change, which means I get an opportunity to drive the little Hot Wheels car and have some fun with it at some point shortly, which I'm looking forward to. I've made a little whoopsie. Now with the SF90, which I'm commuting with at the moment, literally driving backwards and forwards, I'm trying my hardest to every time I'm here, pop that open and charge it because then when I set off, it's at 100%. Where's this guy? Does it have There's a little, no, I mean, I kind of want here, but it doesn't, oh. it doesn't really stay. I just leave it there. there. PPF, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I forgot to plug it in, even though we've been here recording the podcast and everything. And it takes about three hours. So I might as well get the last extra little bit of charge that I can. Yeah. But I try and always arrive here with it on zero, top it up. And then when I up and running, then when I'm driving, obviously it gets to, or well, starts from 100% battery, goes through that. So we need to come up with a few plans We've got three cars back. Yep. We've got the Lusso, the Ford GT, yep. and the Lotus Elise have all returned to this museum. What's it's missing? Uh, lots is missing. GT500, it'll be here in like September. GT Black Series, don't know when it'll be back. SLS Black Series, a week or two. Amira, they're currently saying September. Zenvo, month or two. Clear V6 has Clear V6. no engine. But That'll be away for yeah. a month or two as well. Hopefully some updates on that soon. Do, 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 what do, else? Do. Anything else? Or is that it currently? F1 needs to go back together at some point. Yep. Mini's here. Cupra, windscreen, that's gone. Yep. Uh, well, there's too many cars. What's What's this currently? space? There's more coming. <laughs> right, okay. We'll sort out the roof bars and work out those. Good to have all of the cars back. Um, great to have Stephen over today as well. Link down below to Woodbury House and also, of course, to his podcast. And uh, yeah, thanks to the team at Multimatic. Thanks to the owner of the Lotus Elise for letting us have it back here. Thanks to Topaz for their work with the GDC4 Lusso. And thanks to you guys, as always, for watching for this video. Until next time.